गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स जस्ट आफ्टर द कॉम्पलेशन ऑफ चैप्टर कोऑर्डिनेशन ऑफ कॉम्पाउंड्स नेक्स्ट चैप्टर इज डी ब्लॉक एलिमेंट सो टुडे वी डिस्कस द न्यू चैप्टर डी ब्लॉक एलिमेंट्स डी ब्लॉक एलिमेंट्स in this chapter i will try to complete the introduction part about the d block then the important periodic property some important periodic property like atomic radii ionic radii ionization energy metallic character वेरिएबल ऑक्सीडेशन नेचर कॉम्प्लेक्स फॉर्मेशन नेचर कलर फॉर्मेशन नेचर अलय फॉर्मेशन नेचर आंट एज ए गुड कैटालिस्ट एंड लास्ट वन इज द फॉर्मेशन ऑफ इंटरस्टिचर कंपाउंड सो बिफोर गोइंग टू दैट वन लेट अस डिस्कस द इंट्रोडक्शन पार्ट व्हाट डू मीन बाय द चैप्टर b block element we know in the long form of the periodic table in the extended form of the periodic table for simplicity the total element are categorized into divided into four blocks that is s block p block d block and f block depending upon the एंट्रेंस ऑफ द लास्ट इलेक्ट्रोड इन द डिफरेंट सॉर्सेस दैट इज इन द एक्सटेंडेड फॉर्म ऑफ पीरियड टेबल लेफ्ट साइड इज एस ब्लॉक दैट मींस इन दिस केस द इलेक्ट्रोड एंटर टू द एस ऑर्बिटल एंड लास्ट लाइट साइड इज नोन एज अ पी ब्लॉक बिकॉज़ द लास्ट इलेक्ट्रोड एंटर टू द पी और सॉर्सेस इन बिटवीन एस एंड पी ब्लॉक दैट इज डी ब्लॉक That means last electron enter into the D subcell, and at the bottom there is known as F block. I give a little idea. Mark that. It is one A, two A, three B, four B. Fifth B, sixth B, seventh B. It is known as eight, one B, two B, or it is known as one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. Mark that. This is the skeleton of the long form of the periodic table. It is third A, fourth A, fifth A, sixth A, seventh A. It is zero group. Mark that. This left side to one to is known as S block. This one is known as P block. In between S and P block, that is group three to group twelve. This is known as a D block. And the last one at the bottom of the periodic table, this is known as F block. Two series are there. 
One is starting from Lanthanum, that is known as Lanthanide series. And next one is starting from Actinum, so it is known as Actinide series. In our syllabus, we focus to the D block. That means, from this it is clear that D block element, there is a group 3 to group 12. That is, 10 column is there, group 3 to group 12 are known as a D block element. They are also known as a transition element. Why they are known as a transition element? Because their behavior, their character are in the way of a change or transition from the most electropositive that is S block element that is a metal and the most electronegative B block element that is a non-metal. That means if we observe them, their metallic character gradually decreases while non-metallic character gradually increases. So, their behavior character are in the way of a transition. That's why they are known as, in addition to D block element, they are also known as transition element. So, from this it is clear that there are four series are there. That is known as the first transition series, second transition series, third transition series, and fourth transition series. But in our syllabus, we only focus to first transition series, which contain 10 elements that is scandium, titanium, vanadium, chromium, manganese, iron, cobalt, nickel, copper, zinc. 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. That group 12 contains zinc, cadmium, mercury, mark that. So the element that belongs to group 3 to group 12, that is in 10 columns are there, which are lying in between most electropositive S block element that is a metal with the most electronegative P block element non metal are known as transition element. They are also known as a D block element because during electronic configuration, last electron enter into the D subset. Mark that here. The most important thing that here the valence cell that is MS. And the penultimate cell that is N minus 1 D, that two subcell are incomplete one. By another definition, mark that D block elements are those elements in which valence cell and the penultimate cell just before the valence cell are incomplete one. That means the N minus 1 D in the case of first transition series that is 3 D is incomplete one progressively filled up. If we look after their electronic configuration, then their electronic configuration is a noble gas that is argon 18. Noble gas configuration, N minus 1 that is 3D 1 to 10 and NS that is 4S 1 to 2. That is the normal electronic configuration if we focus to fast transition series. That is noble gas configuration argon 18. 3D 1 to 10 and 4S 1 to 2. So it is clear that the valence cell and the penultimate cell both are incomplete progressively filled up. Except in few cases. Except in few cases, we observe that most of them possess two electrons in their valence cell. Since all of them, most of them possess same number of electron in their valence cell. So they have some similar characteristics property. They exhibit some similar characteristics property. I repeat again, D block elements, otherwise known as the transition element, that is belongs to group 3, 2, group 12, 10 columns are there, 4 series are there. We focus to only first transition series which contain 21 to 30 scandium to scandium to G. But the most important thing that by this discussion, they have possessed unpaired electron. But it is to be noted that 
the group 2 has got then zinc, cadmium, mercury. From the electronic configuration, they have no paired electron. All electrons are paired up. Till they exhibit some similar characteristics to that of the other transition element. That's why, though they have no unpaired electron in their atomic or ionic form, yet they have present in the D block element or transition element being similarity in other chemical properties. And also, as most of them, except one or two cases, most of them possess two electrons, similar valence electron. So, some, some most of them exhibit similar characteristics property. Now we have to discuss some typical periodic properties one by one. The D block elements or transition element exhibit so many periodic properties. The periodic properties are atomic radium, ionic radium, ionization energy. Metallic character exhibit variable oxidation state. They form complex complexes. They form colored compound. They exhibit paramagnetic character. They act as good catalytic behavior. They form alloy, alloy formation. They also form interstitial compound. These are the similar, some different periodic property. Let us discuss one by one. First one is atomic radii. If we focus to atomic radii of the first transition series, that is from 21 to 30, scandium to G, we observe that. This value gradually decreases, decreases up to chromium. I repeat again. The atomic radii in the first transition, transition series gradually decreases from 21, that is scandium, to chromium. And then practically remains same. And at last, that means in case of G, again this value increases. 21 to 24, scandium to chromium decreases, then after 24 to 25 to 29 practically remains same, and in 30 gradually increases. It is due to the inter-electronic repulsion as well as the screening effect. Initially, when we move from left to right along a across a period, nuclear charge increases. As a result of which, the inter-electronic attraction, that means the nucleus positive charge and the valence electron negative charge, the electrostatic forces of attraction increases as a result of which the valence cell comes closer to the nucleus, the atomic radii decreases at that time. 
the screening effect shown by the penultimate cell n minus 1 d 3d in 3d subcell the less number of electron are there so shielding effect is low screening effect is low as a result of which nuclear attraction is high so this value gradually increases as a result of which atomic radii decreases up to chromium then the shielding effect shown by the penultimate electron shown by the penultimate cell and also in electrostatic forces of attraction is nearly same because of increasing our number of electron in the penultimate cell so this one cancel to each other as a result of which atomic radii remains same and finally that is in case of zinc this value again increases due to increasing inter electronic repulse are you good again atomic radii gradually decreases in the first transition series or 3d series up to chromium and then remains last increases in case of zinc next is the second one that is ionic radii second point ionic radii that is ionic radii follow the same trend like that of the atomic radii in case of first transition series that is 3d series ionic radii follow the same trend as that of the atomic radii two point important point one point that means if for the same oxidation state for the same oxidation state atomic radii decreases with increasing nuclear charge and for different oxidation state atomic radii decreases with higher oxidation state are you ready again point 1 ionic radii ionic radii gradually decreases with increase in increase in atomic number with increase in atomic number point 2 for the same atomic number for the same atomic number ionic radii decreases with higher oxidation state third point with for the same oxidation state for the same oxidation state ionic radii decreases with increase in nuclear charge very very important point i repeat again ionic radii gradually decreases across a period with increase in atomic number point 2 for the same atomic number that means if we select f e it is 26 second number both the remain same but if we observe that f2 plus and f3 plus for the same atomic number different oxidation state then higher the oxidation state lower the atomic radii next point for the same oxidation state if we mark the another one case if we observe manganese and iron it is 25 26 2 plus 2 plus point to mark that point one for different oxidation state same atomic number higher the oxidation state lower the atomic ionic radii point two 
for the same oxidation state, different atomic number, higher is the atomic number, lower is the atomic number. Next move to third one, that is known as ionization energy. Third periodic property that is known as ionization energy or ionization enthalpy. What do you mean by ionization energy? We know that it is defined as the amount of energy required. It is defined as the amount of energy required to remove the valence electron from a neutral gaseous metal atom to form a positive ion or cation. Are you again? Ionization energy or ionization enthalpy is defined as the amount of energy required to remove the valence electron of a neutral gaseous atom to form a monovalent positive ion or cation. If we observe this value, in the first transition series across a period, this value gradually increases when you move from left to right. Generally, they have low ionization energy. And this value gradually increases from left to right with increase in atomic number or nuclear charge. Next, we discuss another property that is known as metallic character. Four periodic property that is metallic character. Since all the transition element possess low ionization energy and possess maximum number of vacant orbital than compared to the number of unpaired electron, therefore. Generally, they are metals. I repeat again two important points. Point one they have low ionization energy, and point two they have more number of more number of vacant orbitals in comparison to in comparison to the number of number of unpaired electrons number of unpaired electrons that's why all the transition elements behave as metallic nature Switch over to the next point that is known as they exhibit a variable oxidation state. Next property it exhibit variable oxidation state. It is to be noted that each characteristic property belongs to a two mark question. What is the type of question? One example is most of the transition element exhibit variable, most of the transition element exhibit variable oxidation state. Explain, give reason, two mark question. So, how we explain? Mark that. Most of the transition element exhibit a variable oxidation state due to the presence of unpaired electrode in the valence cell as well as in the penultimate cell that is NS due to the involvement of due to the participation of NS electron and N minus 1 whole into D electron in bond formation. I repeat again. They exhibit
variable oxidation state due to participation of ns and n minus 1 into d electrons in bond formation generally when ns electron participate in the bond formation when the electron present in the valence cell participate in the bond formation then the metal exhibit lower oxidation state on the other hand when the electron present in the valence cell and also in the penultimate cell that is ns electron and n minus 1 going to d electron when participate in the bond formation they exhibit higher oxidation state normally in each period of the transition series we observe that the oxidation state gradually gradually increases up to central metal atom and then decreases if we focus to first transition series if we observe in the first transition series then the generally variable oxidation state the oxidation number increases increases up to manganese then gradually decreases that means in the first transition series manganese exhibit highest oxidation state that of seven everybody again in first transition series in first transition series in first transition series manganese exhibit exhibit highest oxidation state highest oxidation state of plus seven so from the normal electronic configuration that is outermost one n minus one d one to ten and n s one to two from this electronic configuration it is clear that since most of them possess except one or two most of them possess two electrons in their valence cell so in the first transition series they all of them exhibit maximum of them exhibit a common oxidation state of plus two and normally this value increases i will again in case of first transition series manganese exhibit highest oxidation state that is plus seven and in the periodic table that is osmium and ruthenium os and ru exhibit highest oxidation state of a plus 8 in addition to this some metal carbonyl are there they also exhibit zero oxidation state in like n nickel tetra carbonyl nickel penta carbonyl iron zero in this complex that is metal carbonyl they exhibit also zero oxidation state next we switch over to another point that is formation have a tendency to form complexes next point they have the tendency to form different complexes Comp that is complex formation tendency next point is they form different complexes they have the capacity to form different complexes most of the transition element exhibit different complexes and is due to three three to four points that is small size of cation high effective nuclear charge of the cation presence of a vacant inner orbital empty inner vacant d orbital and the last one the tendency of the central metal ion to exhibit to acquire the effective atomic number of nearest noble gas configuration i repeat again the points are there point 1 small size of cation 
During electronic configuration, if all electrons are paired up, then that is known as diamagnetic. On the other hand, if there is a presence of one or more unpaired electron, then it is known as paramagnetic. That is a little bit attracted towards magnetic. Since the most important character of a D block element or transition element that they possess unpaired electron, that's why most of the transition element are of paramagnetic nature. That means higher is the number of unpaired electron, higher is the paramagnetic character. And this paramagnetic character is calculated by a parameter that is known as magnetic moment. That is magnetic moment symbolizes mu where mu is equal to n whole into n plus 2 whole root over bm where n is known as number of unpaired electrons and the BM is known as Bohr magnetum that is unit of magnetic moment so from this it is clear that higher the, para, higher the magnetic moment higher the unpaired electron higher is the paramagnetic nature but in case of G cadmium mercury as they have no unpaired electron so their magnetic moment is zero that's why they are diamagnetic in nature next we discuss next property that is catalytic activity next we discuss Catalytic activity. Most of the D block element act as a good catalyst. So next property is catalytic activity. That means most of the transition element act as a good catalyst. Most of the transition element act as a good catalyst. So many suitable examples is there. That is one example vanadium pentoxide. For example, B2O5 vanadium pentoxide acts as a catalyst. Vanadium pentoxide acts as a catalyst. Finely divided nickel or platinum also acts as a catalyst. Next. Iron, finely divided iron also acts as a catalyst. That is, platinized asbestos or vanadium pentoxide act as a catalyst in contact process. Contact process for manufacture of sulfuric acid. That means highly divided iron, highly divided iron act as a catalyst in Haber process, in Haber's process for the preparation of ammonia. Platinum acts as a catalyst in Ostwald process, in Ostwald process for manufacture of post process for a manufacture of nitric acid so many other examples are there it is clear that most of the transition metal atom act as a catalyst and this catalytic activity due to some important point that is point one presence of on presence of vacant orbital they produce large surface area and also they have the tendency to form intermediate complexes I repeat again 
some points are there point 1 they have large number of vacant orbitals large number of vacant orbitals next they produce large surface area and the last one is and the last one is they have tendency they have the tendency to form unstable intermediates due to this reason maximum transition metal act as a good catalyst we know what is catalyst catalyst is a species whose presence alter the rate of reaction means it may increase the rate of reaction if it is a positive catalyst it decreases the rate of reaction if it is a negative catalyst but it is never participating in the reaction its presence only changes the rate of reaction next we discuss next point alloy formation next point Next property is alloy formation. So you know that most of the transition element form different alloy. What is alloy? Alloy is a homogeneous solid solution. Alloy, I repeat again. Alloy is a homogeneous solid solution in which it is prepared by melting two or more metal component and cooling the melt it will form alloy we know the metals possess most of the metal possess similar characteristics they have the similar atomic radii and also some other chemical similar chemical property the metals also a special property that means they substitute, one metal can substitute the position in the crystal lattice of another metal. That's why most of the metal form alloy. Generally, alloy are hard, more resistance for corrosion, possess high melting point. Some common examples of alloy, brass, bronze, monel metal these are suitable examples of alloy last switch over to interstitial compound formation of last point we discuss that is formation of interstitial compound last point that is formation of interstitial compounds most of the transition element or most of the d block element form interstitial compound i put again most of the transition element form interstitial compound in which small element that is nitrogen oxygen carbon they are placed in the interstitial space of the metal atom that's why they are known as interstitial compound maximum of element d block element also form this type of interstitial compound these are the some periodic properties of the d block element or transition element it is all about the chapter D block element.